this is the fluid you're supposed to have. And you can't create this in the body from your food anymore because it isn't in the food anymore. That was the plan because it's not in the soil anymore. That was the plan of nature. I'm Luke Story. For the past 22 years, I've been relentlessly committed to my deepest passion, designing the ultimate lifestyle based on the most powerful principles of spirituality, health, psychology, and personal development. The Lifestylist Podcast is a show dedicated to sharing my discoveries and the experts behind them with you. If you follow me on social media, you've no doubt seen me wearing my Blue Blocks glasses. You can find them at blueblocks.com. And if you use the code LIFESTYLIST over there, you're going to save 15% off. So why do I wear these glasses? Well, during the day, even if you're in somewhere that's supposed to be healthy, like let's say a Whole Foods or even the gym, you're probably walking around under the most trash brain and eye destructive light possible, LED lights, fluorescent lights, etc., So it's really important to protect your eyes and your brain and your melatonin, et cetera, not only at night, as now many of us are learning, but also during the day. So that's why I have different color blue blocks. I'll have the ones that have lenses that are yellow, the ones at night that are more amber or even dark red. Just depends on the time of day. But I love blue blocks because they are scientifically valid and that they're blocking out the right spectrum. And they also have really well-made frames that are made in Australia, not like cheap-ass ones made in China. They're going to fall apart, et cetera. So they're really high quality. Another thing that's very cool is they're now doing prescriptions. So you can get reading glasses or your regular RX glasses by just uploading your script at checkout and they do the rest. You can also send them your own frames and they'll make your rad-looking glasses blue blocking. It's very cool. So again, go to blueblocks.com and enter the code LIFESTYLIST to save 15% off. Also, another new product they have that's very cool is something called the Remedy Sleep Mask that you can wear once you take your blue blocking glasses off. Did you know that light hitting your eyes, even when they're closed, is enough to raise blood sugar levels and suppress melatonin? Yeah. So that's why you need a 100% blackout sleep mask. Now, this thing is awesome for travel. There's no eye pressure. It doesn't like smash your eyes like a lot of eye masks do. It gives you complete uh, darkness and that's guaranteed. And they also have free worldwide shipping, not only for the sleep mask, but also for their glasses. So I would do yourself a favor, hook up some of the glasses and definitely get the uh, Remedy sleep mask as well. You can find them at blueblocks.com and you can save 15% with the code LIFESTYLIST. That's blueblocks.com. In my daily routine, there's a few things I focus on to biohack my life, including my daily dose of healthy light with Juve's red light therapy devices. That's J-O-O-V-V. I'm sure you've heard me talk about them before. Now, I'm really pumped right now because they just launched their next generation of devices and made some huge upgrades that I'm really stoked about. Juve's new units are sleeker and up to 25% lighter with all the same power as before. And they've also intensified their coverage area so you can stand as much as three times further away from the device and still get the recommended dosage. They've also upgraded the setup for the new devices with quick, easy mounting options so your new Juve can fit just about anywhere. Now, some of us, like myself, like to use the Juve devices at night to wind down from the day. That's why all the new devices have the ambient mode for a calming, lower-intensity light at night. And that's way healthier than all the bright blue light from all of our screens, and it's more in line with your natural circadian rhythms. Plus, the new devices include some really cool new features like Recovery Plus Mode, which utilizes pulsing technology to give your cells an extra boost of recovery after a tough workout with the rejuvenating near-infrared light. So if you're looking to get a new Juve device from your home, I've got some exciting news. Just go to juve.com slash Luke and use the code Luke, and you're going to get an exclusive discount on Juve's newest devices. Now, exclusions apply, limited time only, so I'd hurry up and get over to juve.com slash Luke. That's J-O-O-V-V dot com slash Luke. Hook up that discount before it goes away. If you are a water geek like me, you just stumbled on the most useful podcast I have ever done on the topic. It's called The Ultimate Water Show, Filter and Alkaline Myths and Miracle Seawater Solution with Robert Slovak. 
Like last week's show with Dr. Rashid Buttar, this episode was recorded at Cuixmala, Mexico in preparation for our upcoming retreat, The Healing Power of Energy, January 30th through February 6, 2021. If you want to get in on this event, come hang out with our guest Robert, Dr. Rashid Buttar, and Jerry Rivera from the Rasha, who was formerly on the show. You can get your ticket at lukestory.com slash events. It's a fantastic place and a brilliant group of people that's going to teach you everything about the healing power of energy. Okay, a little about our guest, one of my favorite people in the world and a real firecracker and wealth of knowledge at his ripe age of 75 years. Uh, Robert Slovak is a degreed mechanical and aeronautical and astronautical engineer best known for co-founding water factory systems in the early 70s. He and his brother were among the early developers of reverse osmosis or RO technology and its many applications. In 2010, Robert co-developed the first reactive molecular hydrogen tablet to the medical profession and health-minded consumers. I'm sure you've tried these tablets. He was the guy that came up with them. Now widely acclaimed as a medical breakthrough, molecular hydrogen or H2 primarily functions as an essential antioxidant and signaling molecule. Currently, Robert's decade-long interest in deuterium-depleted water, or DDW, is taking a big step forward. With the revival of Russian research from the 1960s and recent announcements explaining the profound health, medical, and longevity benefits of deuterium-depleted water, Robert and his associate acted quickly in creating a new company, Lightwater Scientific. Now, in this conversation, we don't get too much into the deuterium-depleted water or the molecular hydrogen. Because quite frankly, our talk about (laughs) seawater, quinton, which I'll explain shortly, and just water filtration and Kangen machines and all the things we get into took a couple hours. And so I quickly realized that the conversation where we get into hydrogen and deuterium is going to be part two, which will be recorded at the event coming up in January that I mentioned moments ago. In this conversation, what we do cover is the deepest dive ever into all things water. The list of topics we cover is never ending, so I'll just give you a taste here, no pun intended. The origins of drinking water filtration systems and the risks of under-sink RO units and bacteria, the nastiness of tap water and why you want to avoid it, the incredible therapeutic benefits of Quinton seawater and why it's my number one top supplement. The Quinton seawater mineral supplement is incredible, and Robert has so much amazing information about it, as well as some anecdotal stories that will blow your mind, like women becoming fertile again, cripple dogs walking, like real miracle stuff. It's incredible. We also talk about the lesser known applications of this seawater, like injecting it and using it as eye drops, both of which I do often, and as a caveat, I would not necessarily recommend. Robert will explain. And we do talk a little bit about the molecular hydrogen as the ultimate antioxidant and why it is my number two supplement in the world. But make sure you listen to the end as Robert is one of the most knowledgeable people I've ever interviewed about health in general, and he dropped an endless supply of knowledge bombs that will truly blow your mind. So in this episode, you're going to hear about the coolest biohacks in the world, and chances are you're going to want to follow up on a few of them. So to get yourself some Quinton minerals, deuterium depleted water, hydrogen tablets, and the best countertop reverse osmosis system in the world, here's where you go, waterandwellness.com. That's waterandwellness.com. Got you a discount code over there. It's STORY10. That saves you 10% off your first order at waterandwellness.com. Trust me, you're going to want that link after you hear this interview. Okay, so that's all we've got here. Now, you know, being a water sign, I'm a Scorpio. I love me some water. I've been studying water drinking water, bathing water, hot springs, cold springs, every kind of filtration system. I had a Kangen machine 10 years ago, got rid of it. You'll find out why. I get a lot of questions about water. So if you're someone who's been curious about the best water practices, this is the episode for you. Enjoy. Robert, (laughs) we've been having a conversation all morning. and. uh, Every time that, every time I see you, I think, man, we should just have mics on. And it actually is true. It is true. The car ride over here, everything we've been doing could be and should be documented. But uh, here we are. The mics are on. We're live. And uh, man, we have so much to talk about here at lovely Queeksmala. It is, I would say to this uh, 75th year of my life, I'd say this is the most amazing piece of property that, that I have ever been in. Truly. 
I say that all the time when I post I mean, this on I social can't media. It. I literally say this is my favorite place on earth, and people probably think I'm just throwing that out yeah, there. Your latest little fling, yeah. right? But honestly, it doesn't get much better than this. No. And Thirty thousand acres. I mean, I yeah, I've never been in one place that was thirty thousand acres, except maybe Denver Airport. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the underground bases yeah, later. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's what's funny. We were talking about on the way over here from the casitas. And when you think about moving into a property or buying a property, as I, as I said, been wanting to get out of the city and I'm looking at properties, I think I have my real estate minimum at, you know, two acres. And I think, man, if I had two acres after living in LA for 30 years, two acres is palatial. Correct. And if I find one in Idaho or something that's got five to 10 acres, I'm like, oh my God, that's like having your own state. Yeah. Exactly, And then you come here and you realize the magnitude of 1,000 acres, let alone 30,000 30, acres of pristine jungle. Where jungles. there's every species of animal we could dream of, including crocodiles and zebras, okay? Yeah, it's insane. It's, it's insane. insane. So this is definitely the, the nicest set I've ever had on video and uh, one of the interviews I'm most excited to have. So... As we were discussing prior to the official recording, there's so many different directions we could go here. Uh, you're seven, what are you, 75, you said? Yeah. yeah. I was at your 75th birthday party recently, yes. actually. And we could record for 10 hours. So picking what to start with is challenging. But I think because the element that I'm most closely related to and just value so highly and deeply is water as we sit here on the Pacific coast. Correct. Um, so let's... Start with water. Uh, if you could give me kind of a truncated history of how you got involved in the industry, filtration, et cetera, and then we'll go into a bit more of the esoteric um, sure. topics around water. Well, water is my thing for 50 years. And I was trained as an aeronautical and astronautical engineer. That's my education. And was shuttled off to the military industrial complex to solve some Minuteman three problems, the missile of America, and soon became kind of disenchanted with that endeavor and discovered membrane separation. Okay. It was something that a chemical engineer said, Robert, you're at the right time, the right age to look at this new up and coming technology membrane separation, which includes, among other things, reverse osmosis. My brother and I both, who work, we worked together for 50 years as phenomenal partners, okay? And we both, wow, we really like this. And it's at the beginning. So we uh, set up a laboratory in our condominium in Corona del Mar, California. And we went to work and really became the, probably the most well-known guys in promoting, how do you use this technology? What can you do with it? I mean, we had, we had mem reverse osmosis membranes hanging from our shower stall. I, I mean, it was this hokey in a way. But we did much of the development. And then by the late 70s, we had absorbed and learned so much information. We went around the United States and gave classes to the water industry to introduce them to this technology they were just beginning to hear about in the magazines. So we gave classes that went for two to three days and we taught really the nation of, in, of water, of the water industry, what this was all about and its capabilities. But reverse osmosis can separate anything from water. So it can separate virtually any contaminant category. There's a few exceptions. It can separate the water from fresh orange juice. And that's how they make the concentrated orange juice. Or any concentrated orange juice that you might buy in a store, whether it's pomegranate juice or tart cherry juice, it's all separated by membrane separation. Uh, because it can remove all the minerals from water the water will not leave spots, okay? And this was a shock. We decided that my brother and I created the concept of spot-free rinse, one of our funnest things that we did. Really? Yeah. And wow. I don't know if you've ever been to a self-serve car wash, and one of the selections at the end is spot-free. Uh, you may not have. Or you may have gone through a, 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 
a one of the big car washes that says spot free. And at the end, they just flood it with reverse osmosis water so that when it dries... <laughs> That's funny. I never knew that. It's, it doesn't leave spots. And you don't have to wipe it down so carefully or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or you can just drive away and the, the, the water goes away. Yeah. And doesn't leave spots. And it was so much fun. The first... It's, I'm going to interrupt. It's funny that you just mentioned Corona Del Mar and the spot free. Oh, oh, tell me. A week ago, I went to the health food store there on the way back from San Diego and drove through a car wash, no. <laughs> and the spot free car wash in Corona Del Mar. I swear to God. Okay. So there you go. Anyway, I okay. digress. We're, can, the, we are connected. Yeah. So uh, I remember the first International Car Wash Association show where we were going to un- divulge this information and show what we had. I remember it was in Las Vegas, big deal. And, and I had a speaking spot. And three people showed up for my talk, okay, because of the simple reason that no one believed that water could not inherently leave spots. It was a fascinating awareness we didn't even have. They, the average person just thinks, hey, water leaves spots. Uh, you know, don't ask me what it is, but water leaves spots. But it's not true. Water doesn't leave spots. That It, it only leaves spots because there's minerals left in it. And I don't know if you know that RO water is treated and it in rinses the silicon wafers of when they make microcircuits and print them on silicon wafers. I don't know if you know this. It has to be the cleanest surface, you know, in the world because like a few atoms will disturb a microcircuit. So RO is involved in that level of water. It's called ultra pure water. So... Three people show up for my talk. People go, people were patting me on the back. Yeah, that's good. Water that doesn't leave spots. Okay. (laughs) No, no, really. So three people showed up and those three people actually were convinced and bought spot-free systems. And then the next car wash show, because it's a very close knit organization, they told others and then it was standing room only the next year's talk. and, And then it became a real industry of spot-free rinse. They spot-free rinse trucks on the highway, trains. I mean, it just makes it much cheaper. So that was one of our funnest endeavors with water. And then we made water for printing, water for dialysis. All of these things use membrane separation, such as reverse osmosis, to make the water clean enough. But probably our most common product was making RO drinking water systems. And uh, we first made systems that literally hooked up to your faucet, went on the counter and filled a little plastic tank and went and made bottled water. That's how we thought of it. They, you don't have to have bottles. And then as we got a little more sophisticated in the mid 70s, we made an under sink reverse osmosis system. And that under sink reverse osmosis system had a tank, a sealed tank, and, and that had that had a bladder in it with air. So when the RO membrane filled that tank, it filled it and compressed the air. And then when you opened your faucet, the compressed air forced it to the faucet. Okay. So this went on, this became famous. We made this for many large companies and we were the largest producer, uh, our company for decades. Now, Membrane development in the beginning days, a membrane, and actually when we were in uh, San Diego, I've carried a membrane with me for probably a year and a half, always hoping I'm going to unroll it because it is amazing to see a membrane unrolled. It just looks like a cylinder. But then when you open it up, it's just like another world of stuff in there. And I just opened it up last weekend and then you can't open it again. You just throw it away. And and it would have been fun to show people what a reverse osmosis, but maybe next time. So this membrane made five gallons a day. And this is very important for your uh, audience because many of them, I'd say 50% of your audience may have an under sink reverse osmosis system. And this is an important a message, an alert even. So membranes made five gallons a day and people ran out of water and nothing was better because you always made fresh water. 
Then, so that's five gallons a day. Then membranes went to 10 gallons a day, and then 12, and 15, and 24, and 35. And it was done because they could. They were inventing new membranes that water would go through so quickly, and it was great. But it wasn't great for that application. Now, if you go to Home Depot, buy an RO system, Costco, buy it, call the local dealer, your membrane will make between 50 and 75 gallons a day. But you and your family are going to use less than three. So that tank that's filling up, it will never get emptied. It will never get emptied for days, weeks, months, and even years. It will have water in it, the same water at some point portion of it. This becomes a microbial incubator. And now that we have more chronic disease, more gut dysbiosis, more health problems than ever before, this is incompatible. Your body cannot process this amount of bacteria. Now, I don't know if you know that you have a tremendous protection system against microbes, pathogenic microbes in your body. It's called the stomach. The stomach's pH of one to three will inactivate virtually all bacteria, most viruses. The only thing it might not get, especially if you had compromised gut acid or stomach acid, might be the third category of microbes, pathogens called uh, amoebic dysentery or protozoan cysts. Okay. These are organisms that are more parasites. And and when they're challenged, when their life is challenged, they can close up into a cyst form. That's like an army tank, okay? Nothing's going to disrupt it. Nothing's going to kill it. Chlorine isn't going to oxidize it, even though ultraviolet does get it, which we'll talk about, okay? so. It closes up until it finds a nice place in your, in your intestines or, or your, your microbiome. And then it goes, ooh, and it starts to grow, multiply, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's one of the most difficult things to get rid of. You've heard of Giardia. It, they often call it camper's disease because you can go to the most pristine stream and drink it and go, oh, this is fantastic water. But because there are animals in nature, and protozoan cysts commonly exist in the intestines of small animals, squirrels, foxes, rabbits, the whole thing. Uh, this, they can uh, deposit in a stream, giardia, cryptosporidium, etc. these protozoan cysts, and you drink it. The water tastes fine, but it can have these organisms, and it doesn't take a lot. But it does take a lot to get rid of them. So this organism cannot be killed by your stomach acid. But children, infants, and the elderly don't make a lot of stomach acid. And they don't inactivate the bacteria and the viruses. So you can get sick from even water that isn't even pathogens. It's just too much bacteria. You see, even... Organisms that aren't considered pathogens, if they're in high enough numbers, we identify them with a special word called opportunistic organisms, meaning they're going to take advantage of some weak thing in your body because there's so many of them and they just go, let's go for it. So the water in an RO tank can become so microbially rich That especially a child with autism, with a gut dysbiosis, defective microbiome, this can, he will never get better. And the parents are lovingly giving him their RO water from under the sink. So the first time I spoke at a autism conference, probably eight years ago, I had to tell the, the mothers in the audience, you cannot give your child this RO water from your under sink storage tank because it is going to make them sick and keep them sick. So it was, it shocked really the, the, the world and people like alarm. I can't, what do I have to do? We just paid $800 for one of these. I said, here's what you have to do. You have to drain that tank 
every day. You have to make it make new water every day. And for your child, if he has serious gut dysbiosis, you have to further disinfect that water because it won't be enough for some children. And then I introduce them. I hope we're not going to this too quickly. But no, no, this is good. This we is good. have to. We, I introduce them. Said, they said, what? We have to disinfect the water? Yes. Here's the easiest way I know of doing it. This is a product called the Steripen. You can buy it anywhere. Camping stores, Amazon. It's less than $70. The Steripen. Steripen. For those of you listening to this podcast, uh, there's going to be a lot of things talked about that have visual representation. So I'm going to recommend that people watch this on YouTube or on my website. So if this were a glass of water, the mother just drew from the RO system. You would pick, you put that in. So I'm going to describe what we're seeing here. Uh, it looks like a sort of like a giant thermometer and it's got a tube of blue light, like a, a neon light, maybe two inches long that goes into the water, which is producing this. Is that UV A and B or UV or one this of This is 254 nanometer UV. Oh, okay. This is the germicidal UV. Got it. Okay. So it basically looks like a, a handheld lightsaber that he's twirling around in the water. Now, Robert, how long? You only have to do, well, it will go off automatically. Oh, okay. It will know so it, because after, it's about 30 seconds, 45 seconds. This will inactivate any known bacterial species, not wow. just bacteria and virus, but this will actually inactivate the protozoan cysts. Wow. Okay. So this is great for That's camping. So this is cool. great for you know, you buy a bottle of water in India, you don't know where it's from. Yeah. So you always use, it. Yeah. that's it. You're done. Wow. Okay. So on the, on the water filtration thing here, now I've done, for those listening that have listened to the show for a while, they'll know I did some six odd hours. Uh, it's called the Water Wars. It's a trilogy podcast I okay. did about three years ago. Uh, because I just, since most of your body is made of water, this is the way I always describe it. Okay. When you, when a body's cremated, what's left? You know, a little jug of carbon, basically, right? Mm, let's say mostly there's definitely carbon, okay. but some of it turns to carbon dioxide in the burning process okay. more than you okay. would think. But mostly it's the periodic table of the elements, whatever you got of it in got your it. lifetime. So you, you have this, this bottle of ash, right? Yes. And then I think, well, where does the rest of you go? The rest of you was the water part. That's evaporated by the fire. Am I am I correct in that? One hundred percent. Okay. The other thing is, and how much of what? How much was that of your body? The water. Uh, well, I hear anywhere between seventy and ninety something percent is the common. Well, I mean, as an adult, you and I are between sixty and seventy percent. Okay. A fetus is about ninety eight percent. Wow. Okay. But if we look at it from a different perspective, that's by weight. So. 65% of you is water by weight. But if we were to just do an experiment and we said, let's add up each type of molecule in the body, each type of substance. How many molecules of fat do you have? You tally them. How many molecules of carbohydrates do you have? You tally them. How many molecules of water do you have? And you go down the line, calcium carbonate from bones and so on and so on. At the tally, you will add up and you will go, my God, 98.8% of the molecules that make up the water, uh, make up the body are water. Wow. 98.8. Wow. Well, that furthers You're my- You're a sack of water. That furthers my uh, passion and interest about the topic of water because I think in the couple of decades I've been in the alternative health and healing space- there's so much consideration given to what we eat. And I think it's obviously important, you know, glyphosate, GMOs, yep. aspartame, all the nasties. Like we definitely want to get rid of that. But at the end of the day, to me, the water is one of the most important. And then of course, light and EMF, which we'll hopefully get Correct. into. Uh, but anyway, so that's why I've devoted so many shows to water, but even that wasn't enough. Um, you know, it's, it's no accident that when we seek to leave this planet and go somewhere else, what do we look for first? Water. You know, I mean, it's no. the basis of all life. You know totally. this, uh, but this is why I've been so fascinated with it. And, um, and also not only for drinking, but I'm just someone who just loves being near bodies of water and I'm obsessed with hot springs. Every Creek I ever see, I jump in if it looks remotely clean. I mean, I'm just like so drawn to water for whatever reason. Yes. I'd say we all are. So 
And you know, it's funny, I was just looking at some real estate listings today and in many real estate listings in the main thumbnail photo is just a picture of the pool. And it's a really nice house. They show the pool. And I thought, isn't that interesting? You know, that's what's going to exactly. sell people is just being near a small manufactured body of water. There's something about it that we are attracted to. And so I'm just fascinated by it. But I want to jump back to the filtration thing because I think this is so confusing to people. Personally, the water that I feel best drinking is high altitude, low mineral spring water. I've had the, I get this water from a company called Live Spring Water. They deliver it from Oregon to all, all around California in glass bottles. I know them. And, and they make very beautiful glass Yeah, they've got the containers. flower of life geometry on it. Yes, and, all that. and I use that from my own water purifier. I fill that oh, interesting. with some relevant gems uh -huh. and I put it in the early morning sun. Got it. Okay, okay. okay. So I'm coming from... You know, a good source of spring water is the optimal water. Uh, but many people don't have the access because they live in a low altitude area or they just can't get it together. They live in the desert or who knows what. Um, so people are really asking me all the time about the best filters. And there's two companies that I found to seem to be doing it right. One is Pristine Hydro and the other one's Ophora Water. Um, I, don't, I don't have the Ophora system. I do have the Pristine Hydro system, which I don't really drink unless I run out of my spring water because I'm very fortunate in that way. What can people do if they're in a place where their only option is municipal water that's obviously toxic and has fluoride and all these other chemicals in it? Uh, what can one do to safely filter their water? Would they have to run the UV to get rid of any of that okay. bacteria? That's you're, you're, you're just hitting the right question. So, okay. um, I am not, I, because I am not for a reverse osmosis system mated to a sealed tank for the reasons we just covered. Yeah. That would eliminate that pristine hydro. Right. Okay. And, and I do believe they may make a countertop they elaborate do, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it's not very user friendly, but it's. Yeah. It's uh, their travel model. It comes yeah. in a little suitcase. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So. That is a, the, the pristine hydro is a very antiquated design. Okay. And I'm not, I hope I'm not raining on anyone's parade. No, I'm, I'm just saying it I'm like for it is. Honesty and free okay. expression. So another here, thing yeah. is, and all of this is done to sold, sell the consumer. So everybody knows that reverse osmosis and distillation. And let me just back up the only two technologies that are capable of removing or reducing every category of chemical is distillation plus activated carbon and reverse osmosis plus activated carbon. Never forget this. That's okay. your guideline. Okay. For your audience, do not sway or stray yeah. from these two restrictions. Both are valid. Distillation plus activated carbon has not been a popular consumer product. You have to clean it. It costs a lot of energy and so on, but it's excellent way of, of, of purifying and getting rid of the contaminants from water. And there are hundreds of contaminants that could be in water. It's not in all water. Let's say a typical municipal water supply might have five to seven contaminants you absolutely must get rid of, okay? But there are hundreds that can be in a water supply. The EPA has a list called maximum contaminant levels for, let's say, 70 to 100 contaminants. But there are hundreds more that if Congress, Congress is the entity that says we were going to add this contaminant to the standard, they decide. But if they were to add all of the contaminants that could be in water, like there's some places in America that have pesticides that aren't regulated. If you did that for everybody, no one could afford the tap water. Okay? The process would become so expensive, you wouldn't be buying a thousand gallons for four dollars, you would be paying forty dollars. So it's out of the question. So you do have to have some protection of your own. Now, 
part of the problem is that if you're making municipal water, what percentage of that are you actually ingesting? Less than 1%. So it's not practical to treat the other 99% to a high standard just so you don't get it in the drink part you drink. That's why point of use, P-O-U, water treatment, makes the most economic and, and uh, uh, practical sense. And that's having a filter of some kind in your house. So we said that filter should be distillation plus activated carbon or reverse osmosis plus activated carbon. We already, it's a easier to choose a distiller because it's simpler. And do distillers have this issue with the bacteria formation? Zero. There's no tank. That's no tank. like a holding tank. Okay. There are distillers that do have tanks, larger ones for homes and you have tanks and they're much easier to clean and access. And you can just actually pour something in the tank, hydrogen peroxide, a little capful, done. But with an RO sealed tank, you can't. And that's the problem. And what happens is I wrote the book on the maintenance installation, the industry asked me to, of reverse osmosis systems. And I put in there, the only thing I wrote twice, meaning I repeated it from the beginning and I repeated it at the end. You must sanitize the tank before it's installed. I mean, this is the best that you can do. And every time you change the filters, what percentage of the industry do I think embrace that? Well, under 10%. So everybody is just getting an RO system, put it in. No one's thinking it could become a bacterial incubator. So that isn't the way to go. Anybody has a storage tank, forget it. Another big flaw that's very appealing to the consumer is we have a cartridge that adds minerals to the water. Okay. Everybody th- knows that distillation removes minerals, reverse osmosis removes minerals. Now, practically speaking, the variation of all the public water supplies is so great in minerals, you never could say you got to leave the minerals in. Okay. There's not a lot and there's not many of the the best ones. And it's not just minerals. Everybody talks about minerals, but hardly anybody mentions or is aware of the trace elements. There may be 10 primary minerals that you all know, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, iron, et cetera, sodium. But there's 70 trace elements and no one talks about it. Where are they coming you couldn't find them in 90% of the water supplies because it's not in there. You have to get them from your food. But people say, hey, we're going to put in minerals. So everybody thinks that takes, that's taken care of by the mineral cartridge. Well, these mineral cartridges, which use calcite and something called corosex or magnesium oxide, they only put in calcium which most Americans don't need more of, and magnesium, which most Americans do need more of. Okay, granted. But it it gives people a false sense of security because you need all the trace elements, not just two of the minerals that your food is truly capable or a supplement, but you're missing all the others that you can't get anywhere. And this was brought to our attention brilliantly by Dr. Uh, Professor August Dunning, Caltech Professor Emeritus, astrophysicist who figured out years ago, hey, there's a direct relationship from 1900 to present between the loss of minerals and trace elements with the increase of chronic disease. He plotted it. You all, your audience must see Habitat Crisis. It, it's brilliant. It's a video. It's a video. It's a PowerPoint presentation. It's many forms. Habitat crisis. And and name the gentleman again. Professor August Dunning. Okay, cool. Cool. We'll we'll link that in the show notes. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, It's really priceless and very convincing. And so he says, how are you, how are we going to fix this? And his conclusion was it must be fixed. For humanity for all time. But how do you do it? He says, well, how did we get there? Mechanized farming, starting in 
maybe the late 1800s, early 1900s, use of chemical fertilizers, nitrogen, phosphorus, the use of pesticides, herbicides, glyphosate, all of the DDP, etc. And then the use of recycled water, okay? Which has a lot of contaminants in it. Not good. So he said, the only practical way that you can change this is to add seawater to the land. Now, what is seawater? Now, I want, this is one of the most, this is a question I've asked all the doctor audiences. In 16 years, no one has answered this correctly. I said, what is seawater, everybody? Oh, they give me a lot of little parts of it. What's the common answer? It's just water with a lot of salt in it? (laughs) Yeah, that was about the best that was done. Water with a lot of salt. But it's the only solution in the solar system that contains the entire periodic table of the elements. You understand? And the periodic table of the elements is what the entire universe is made out of. So if you can like in, if you can like invoke the God thing, it's like God like you know directed the formation of Earth. The fact that it got covered with water from water delivered by by comets and by water that was made in the crust from chemical reactions. Your your um, primal water. Um, these elements. If if you were trying to like create this new thing called life, you'd give it everything you had. And the periodic table is everything you have. And when it dissolves to specific solubilities in the the water that was brought by the comets, you create a solution, a unique solution called seawater. And so life began shortly after the earth became covered with water from the ice in comets it was bombarded for millions of years continuously so it delivered a lot of water and it covered the earth with water a truly blue planet and the crust of the earth which contained all the elements of the periodic table just solubilized in the water to each element has its own solubility right a unique solubility depending upon its atomic structure, chemical nature, etc. So you have a solution of this unique set of the periodic table. And bingo, once that occurred, we call it the primordial ocean. The body of water that actually gave rise offered the properties in which life, multicellular life, began. It used a little, maybe gases from the vents coming from the volcanic, It used some of the gaseous atmosphere. I'm sure cosmic rays, photons from the sun came into play. But life, bingo. We get something called prokaryotic life, the first cells. And then life started to evolve from those cells. And there's five kingdoms of life that include microorganisms, uh, algae forms, um, animals, plants. And uh, fungus. Those are the species of life. And all of those formed from those initial cells. At a certain point, they took on something that was also an organism that was created that was like mitochondria. And that had a unique energy capability in creating energy. And some of those other organisms enveloped those mitochondrians who were going to use this. And that is the origin of mitochondria. And that's when another level of cells called prokaryotes were created. And then I ask my audience of doctors, okay, so we had life form 3.8 billion years ago. Then it started to evolve. But how long did it stay in the ocean during evolution? No one comes close. Millions of years, 10 million years, 100 million years. And they're like pushing it. Two and a half billion years. Life was only in the ocean. Can you imagine any project going on for two and a half billion years in a constant environment? What 
impact that has that environment must have on its design of what was going on in there, the evolutionary design, the evolutionary structure and the evolutionary function. It was simply everything. And then about 400 million years ago, life left the ocean. Plant life first, then animal life. And seeking a terrestrial existence for whatever reason. And then that hat life had to do without this magnificent environment. It just chose to be in for two and a half billion years. So that was a special environment. So nothing influences you then and nothing influences you now more than water itself with the periodic table in it. And that was the conclusion of August Dunning, who started a company that makes seawater fertilizer. And you really have to see his argument. But until that is spread throughout the lands of the world, which will take hundreds, maybe a thousand years, I had embraced just by sheer accident and serendipity while I was doing water research in Brazil, I discovered the product I'm most known for, and that's Canton Marine Plasma, which you know well. Oh, man, I'm I'm on this stuff uh every day so those watching on video uh we're looking at these little ampules that are uh, maybe the size of your pinky and they're glass and uh you break off one end and hold it up to your mouth then you break off the other end and you just shoot it down and it tastes just like well it just tastes like salt water yeah and there's two kinds there yeah and so i want to get the difference between the hypertonic and the isotonic because i've always wondered that and i just fluctuate between both of them or or just take both canton did not start out first it's called canton canton that's the french pronunciation after the revolutionary biologist of the late 1800s rene canton he was a student of darwin he was a believer in 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 the bio terrain he was against pasteur's germ theory uh he aligned himself with claude bernard uh, the, the the real physiologist of the day. And most, some of your audience may know that there was like a battle of the germ theory versus the yeah, terrain there, theory. There is right now. And, and there is now, right? <laughs> so the germ theory guys like Pasteur and his backers called the early pharmaceutical industry said, the reason you get sick are because there's like germs, okay? And and we, we need to develop and stuff viruses. That, that kill right. the germs, yeah. okay? And the viruses. Including viruses, yeah. And uh, Claude Bernard, Antoine Bechamp, and René Canton said, "Uh uh-uh, these organisms are always in your environment. They're always in you. Maybe not all of them at the same time, but they're always with us. It's your, the status of your terrain that allows them to manifest themselves in you as disease or you overcome it. And that battle was won by Pasteur, who recanted, it is said, at the end, like near death, he said, well, it's the terrain. It isn't the germ. So nevertheless, since that time, we became victims of living in the world of germ disease. That was it. Kill the germs give you chemicals, et cetera. And the thinking of improve your terrain, meaning improve the capabilities of your body to to develop the immune system, et cetera. You don't need it because we have some drugs. We'll take care of it. And that remains to this day. And that off of that, we had extra, we had naturopaths come out who these special uh, different medical disciplines reflect that, hey, it is about the terrain. And now we're faced with an interesting situation in which more than ever in, I think, year in my life, that the terrain must be understood and developed and it ain't the germ or the virus. So um, this product came out in 1897 Oh, it's been around that long? Yes, sir. That's wild. How dare you not know that, <laughs> knowing funny. me? I think I, f- I first saw it maybe in the early 2000s, you know, so I figured, ah, it must have come out in the 90s. Yeah. So this was this product here came out in 1897, just like that. 
And they made them actually much larger as well. And it wasn't thought of as, oh, this is, you need minerals and trace elements because farming hadn't degraded by then. There was no mechanized farming in 1897, really. You know, there was no pesticides, no, no chemical fertilizers. So people were much more healthy. So this came out to one as a proof by Rene Canton, who wrote a treatise in 1904 called L'eau de mer milieu organique, which means the water of the ocean is the same as your milieu, which, which is the fluids in your body. In fact, Rene Canton said the only way life could have left the, the sea was to take the sea with it. And if you analyze seawater, it's virtually, and if we just take a, gr a gross look at the 10 major electrolytes that are, of course, it's the most essential in your blood. They're exactly in the same proportions as seawater. Wow. Bingo. What? So, How come nobody told us this? Right, you know, right. An entire room of doctors. I, you can't be serious. And then that's, I show them the analysis. And it's that's like, crazy. That's crazy. So what does that mean? That means that, that now the ocean became more concentrated over, over time in billions of years because we had the hydrologic cycle and we were taking minerals from the, the earth and, and depositing them in the sea through the hydrologic cycle, okay? You evaporate water, you condense it, it rains and snows over land, and it rushes back to the sea, and, and you erode the land. So it went from actually the primordial ocean, which was likely isotonic, isotonic. Uh, for those of you chemists out there, it's 0.9% uh of the elements of the periodic table in water and hypertonic the the modern ocean is 3.3 percent so our blood is also 0.9 percent that's the saline solution you might get in the hospital and so Quinton made this what he made he diluted the ocean he harvested this from a very special place called a plankton bloom. This is critical. How he knew this, nobody really knows. But he chose a place, how he, again, how he knew, I don't know, that was most like the primordial conditions. It was very rich in phyto and zooplankton, and it formed something that is the greatest biochemical reactor on the planet, called the plankton bloom. And within a plankton bloom, you have this constant living activity of both the zooplankton, which you might call like phytoplankton or algae, and the zooplankton, they live separated by hundreds of feet. And the zooplankton, you, you would know as there's hundreds of them, krill would be a typical microscopic phytoplankton. And the krill ascend into the phytoplankton like cows going to pasture, they consume it. And all of this chemical reaction is occurring between these two species. And they are forming in between in this space called the zone of biocenosis. And these plankton blooms that exist naturally in the ocean are self-purifying. So when people ask me, well, geez, isn't the ocean, it's a typical question, polluted. I'm going, not in a plankton bloom. It's the purest substance in the planet. It self purifies itself with the organisms, etc. It's very complicated. And the plankton blooms are regulated by satellite. They're watched 24 hours a day. They're monitored by boat, buoy, the whole thing. The mo special instruments are so in the plankton So there's like an blooms. environmental protection. No, more than you can guess because they wow. make 65% of the oxygen on the planet. Oh. Okay. So. They know that the fastest way to destroy the planet would be to take down the plankton blooms. So they are monitored constantly by the world's oceanographic institutes. And you don't even hear, I rarely do I, even, have I ever met anybody who even remember, heard the word plankton bloom, okay? And they don't want you to know, okay? It's like a, a nicely kept secret. 
how important they are. So Quinto knew this instinctively and he harvested the water from a hundred feet down. And, and this was the water it harvested, the hypertonic it's called, pure seawater. And he treated this in a very special way using Swiss ceramic microfiltration to remove all of the organisms that were in it. He only wanted the juice. Oh, interesting. Okay. Because there would be microorganisms be present micro- in the water. There would be millions. Yeah, yeah. Millions. He only wanted the juice. Wow. And he filtered them out. And then he said, I want to do an experiment and I'm going to show how compatible seawater is with life. And he took it and he diluted the seawater, the hypertonic, to the concentration of your blood plasma, okay, which is isotonic, hypertonic, isotonic. And in 1904, before the medical elite of of Europe, he transfused the whole blood of six canine animals, better known as dogs, mostly stray dogs they took. He transfused them with this isotonic seawater, the whole blood now. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the no whole more, blood. All not the, the blood plasma. out of the dog. Out of the dog. And the isotonic solution into in the place dog. of the blood. Yes. And th- tell me the dogs lived. All survived and thrived. Wow. I mean, this is a well-known That's... among physiologists. This is well-known. Right. Low, and it was written up in a 500-page treatise treatise called L'eau de mer milieu organique, that in fact, water of the ocean is the same as your milieu. And I just, as René Canton, just proved it to you. This experiment has been done many times, again, most recently within the last two years, one by the... um, Mount Sinai Blood Institute in New Jersey, and one by another institute, Blood Institute in Spain. And they showed that they took a pig and they exposed it to hemorrhagic shock, which is (laughs) cutting something that a lot of blood comes out. And then they tried to save the pig. And this product right here outperformed whole blood. And the recovery of the pig from hemorrhagic shock. Okay. Now, this product, and I hope nobody in the regulatory agency is listening to me, will outperform any saline solution. That is just simple salt, Morton salt in water with an isotonic concentration. This has all the elements of the periodic table and it's incredibly supportive of healing and the replacement because this is the fluid you're supposed to have. And you can't create this in the body from your food anymore because it isn't in the food anymore. It's not in the soil anymore. That was the plan because it's not in the soil anymore. That was the plan of nature. We'll be right back at you after this brief but important announcement. When I got into herbalism over two decades again, one thing that I became immediately obsessed with was medicinal mushrooms. Now, as someone who's never liked to eat culinary mushrooms, I was terrified when I first found out that there are these incredible natural medicines uh, inherent to mushrooms. And so I tried them out. I started taking the reishi, the lion's mane, the cordyceps, shiitake, etc., and immediately felt an effect. However, over the years, as I learned more about the industry, I discovered that not all mushroom products are created equal. So when I found this company, Lifecycle, recently, I was completely stoked to find out that they make biohacking grade liquid extracts that are extremely potent and absolutely next level. All of their mushroom liquid products have strictly U.S. and Australian grown ingredients, which is really important because most of the mushroom products, in fact, about 95% of them come from China. And they're not all bad, but some of them are. So now more than ever, it's really important to have discernment when it comes to buying herbs and different products and health supplements. So I like to buy local and I always demand the very highest quality for anything I put in my body. And frankly, so should you. 
Another cool element of Life Cycle is they infuse kakadu plum in all of their extracts. This is an amazing fruit that has more vitamin C than any fruit in the world. So when it comes to fortifying your immune system, this is an amazing add-on ingredient. And I like to use their lion's mane for uh, better REM sleep and microdosing with other types of mushrooms that I won't mention here on the show. But uh, these particular products have just completely upgraded my game and my immune system, and I'm really stoked to bring them on board and to share them with you. I've also negotiated a 15% off deal for my loyal listeners like you. So here's how you get a hold of some of these amazing biohacker level medicinal mushroom extracts. Go to lifecycle.com. That's L-I-F-E-C-Y-K-E-L, lifecycle.com. Enter the code STORY15 at checkout and save 15% off at lifecycle.com. And now back to the interview. So when more of the surface of the earth was covered by oceans, and then that ocean receded over billions of years, the deposits of these elements of the periodic table, right, uh, were left in the soil. Don't think of the ocean receding like as in evaporation. Think of the land emerging from geophysical okay. in that ocean. So, and then the ocean runs off and forms what we now know as yeah, our modern Some was oceans. captured inland. There's a right. number of huge, like the, the one we would know, the Great Salt Lake is yeah. part of the original ocean that was captured. Yeah. So inherently throughout the earth, these elements were in the soil and uh, have been depleted over time through natural erosion that I'm assuming with the advent of uh, modern industrialized ag- exactly. agriculture where we've just depleted the soil, use it over and over again you've until it's all it. gone. You've nailed it. So no matter how much organic produce you're getting at Whole Foods, you're, not, you're not getting what would have naturally been present in the food because it was present in the and soil. And I also, to point to something you said, you like you, you said you preferred spring water. You said you preferred a low level of minerals in them. Okay, good. Because it really, our, our, our taste buds seem to like that better, unless some reason you need mineral waters. Okay. But the fact is, I don't care what bottled water someone tells me they use. Okay. I don't care if it's Mountain Valley. I don't care if it's, it's, it's uh, what is yours? The living spring water? Live spring water. Live yeah. spring water. I just tell people, great, they're great waters. But can I tell you how to have that water function better for you as it was intended? Add the periodic table to it. I don't care. So for a two and a, my my waters come in a two and a half gallon uh, a glass uh-huh. jug. So how many ampules of the hypertonic or isotonic would I put in there just to? You even know, though it I'm varies taking for these, you. You're you're not right. All you want to do is to structure this water to work better in your body, okay? And that's a subject we probably won't get to. We should, because no, that's my much, next question. Much more, okay, darn you. <laughs> the much, it's much more complicated, but I'd probably put one ampule per gallon in for you. Got it. Because you're taking this already. Got it. One ampule per gallon, that's yeah. it. Well, and I... if you put one ampule per two gallons, that's okay too. Well, that's the but, water. But we... it's only this you would use. Okay. Because this is already diluted and you'll be wasting your money Got it. <laughs> to dilute it more. So I'm just thinking I also feed that spring water to our cat and dog. So that'd be really great for them too. Phenomenal. And, yeah. you know, my cat story, first of all, I have seen more dogs be healed just with this. I've seen more dogs go berserk when this was just plopped into their drinking water. Okay. It's like they knew better than we know. Something was missing. Thank you, owner. Right, right, right. (laughs) And I can tell you that many a cat owner has just wanted to experiment. They've been to a talk of mine and they break this little end off and they go, I wonder if my cat likes this. And when the cat goes on here, smells it, he just tries to suck this out of there. Okay. Wow. And and cats adore isotonic. Okay. So all cat owners will tell you, you know what else? When I get up in the morning and take this myself and I snap, that cat can hear that snap. Wow. And that cat is in my face 
instantly. That's hilarious. Wow. I'm, I'm going to try it on our cat. No, please. Please. I might have to do it behind my girlfriend's back because she, does, she doesn't like me biohacking her cat because okay. he's sensitive. Well, this is, look, they need, they're the same. They evolved in the C2. Sure. This is the basis of their body fluids and we're not giving it to them. Probably they're worse off than we are. So with these mineral solutions, uh, they come in these little amples. I just, I get big bottles of it and I just yes. put it in the fridge. I drink probably a shot glass every morning and every night. Now the big bottles are fine to use. Yeah. But I prefer people only use the hypertonic in big bottles. Oh, okay. And let me explain why. Because when people, when doctors ask me, what's the difference between these two? Make me understand. I tell them, this is, the isotonic is the medicine. The hypertonic is the nutrient. Got it. This is much more in the body, much more complex in how it's used. This product in the early 1900s was used. I won't tell you. He's to talking that. about the isotonic. The those isotonic, listening. the medicine, the one that is the equivalent to an IV solution, but has the entire periodic table. This product is your body fluid. It works differently than this product. One, it accesses your extracellular fluid instantly. Okay? It just doesn't have the quantity, but it's recognized by the body as the very fluid that's here. This product was used to cure cholera, to cure tuberculosis, to cure gastroenteritis, to cure syphilis, not as like a helper for your, for, for, for your nutritional pleasure, but as the cure. I won't go into it anymore. It's forbidden yeah. territory. Yeah, okay. medical claims and all that. <laughs> but this product early on was what Europe addressed the multiple pandemics of those diseases that I just told you. Okay? And it was so successful after he demonstrated this in 1904 with the dogs that the physiologist of the day, such as Jean Jericho, who really got it, the master physiologist of France, he just goes, I want to try this with the diseased patients because 50,000 people in Europe were dying per month. That also included Northern Africa where cholera had spread to Algeria, Egypt, okay? When they administered this to people, it was able to have them recover from the disease. This became one of the first medicines of the French European physician's desk reference and remained there as a pharmaceutical medicine until 1999. That's wild. Is that wild? That's crazy. Now, this was removed from the French, P from the Vidal, it's called, the PDR of Europe. This was removed at the request of Quinton because they did not want it to be identified as a medicine any longer. Do you understand? Because you couldn't go outside of Europe. No one would allow this to be a medicine again. Uh, I see. So it would have been stuck within stuck. the parameters they of their legal system. They just downgraded it to a nutrient. Got it. So in 1975, after now 75 years of experience of this in French society and other European associated countries, people knew what this did. They knew it made babies without birth defects which they lovingly called Quinton babies. They knew it dealt with almost every kind of health affliction from nasal problems to eye problems to ear problems. Topically. One could put the, the isotonic in their eyes oh, or eye drops. May I do it? Yeah, because <laughs> my eyes bug me a lot. They're really dry and well, swollen you have from never my... So you, for my cell tower when you're poisoning. taking it this way, as we're doing, because we have, don't have anything else, yeah. we have to make sure, because you break glass, that you don't have glass. Okay? Yeah, of course. But yeah. it's recommended when you use it this way, you put it in a little glass with a dropper, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I never do it. So this can be great. 
like if I have nasal congestion or sinusitis, I just, remember, I break one end off yeah. and it becomes a pump. Can you see this? Oh, I didn't know you could do that. A pump. It's like a dropper. Well, do it against your shirt. Just maybe he can pick it up. That is crazy. I've been using these things for years. I never knew no, you no. could do that. So you could see it here. <laughs> it makes a dropper. It's very precise. That's so cool. That is really neat. So what I do, I've done for 16 years. I just... It's and like it almost gives instant relief. Doing a little bump of seawater. <laughs> a little bump of seawater, <laughs> droplet. And then uh, I don't know if there's a tissue around or a napkin because, I, but. Yeah, I got one right here. Good. Throw it over. There you go. So I, I'll just go like this. It's the best eye solution. Sorry, Allergan. Everyone prefers this to your solution. Uh, to your eye solution. It's the best there is. Nothing will give you the result this gives in your, That's in your eyes. so cool. Okay. So I'm just telling you. So then yeah. actually I do this every morning. I put it in my nose. I put it in my eyes. And, and that's how much is left. Almost the whole thing. Wow. And I only use this, this isotonic for that purpose. Sure, sure. Now, do I take a hypertonic a day? Yes. I could follow it with this. 30 minutes before I eat a meal, but I take the isotonic too. Maybe I'll wait 10, 15 minutes. Robert, tell us about the experiments that were done around fertility. I think that is one of the most compelling things I've heard about these sea minerals. Yes, it's the most touching thing for me to tell people. Because if we were here with Rene Canton, that, that he would say, that they would say, more? just put that mic back up there. Yeah. Sorry. There you go. He would tell us, I said, hey, Rene Canton, what was the greatest thing that you discovered? Well, okay, after, the, after Canton eradicating a lot of disease throughout Europe and Northern Africa, we're done. And then that went from maybe 1906, okay, when the pandemic started, through the teens, and maybe ended by the late 20s. In the late 20s, it was announced that there was something called antibiotics, okay? And that stole the show because, wow, it works quickly and it works directly on the germ and not on the terrain like Kintone works, okay? So we, we go for the easiest, fastest thing. And then by 1934, penicillin was in deep, you know, everybody was using it. But the French government in 1975, I started this story, but I didn't finish it, said, hey, We've been using this stuff for 75 years. Look what it's done. It got rid of the disease pandemics. It, it's changed how we have babies. It's remarkable. No more birth defects, et cetera, et cetera. And they said, you know what? We're going to give Quintone away free of charge to every French citizen. Okay. Well, let me tell you what could really, excuse my term, piss off the pharmaceutical industry more than giving something away like this. Okay. They were very unhappy and they knew they had to destroy la little tiny laboratoires canton. So this was used commonly in the hospital when people did have diseases by injection. Okay. I mean, oh, that's what I was going to ask. So one could, so could, these are sterile. You could take an IV of the isotonic if you wanted to. Yes. I mean, you, you could. I mean, of course, I'm not, not recommending advocating that this do that. <laughs> only because it is not, uh, it is not permitted in the United States, but it's done. Oh, okay. All over the world, and, and, and it's done all over the world. That's all I can say. Right. It's actually made in an IV bottle that you will never see because it, it is forbidden to be imported. Got it. Okay. And this is used in many places of so the world. So I'm imagining, you know, if one goes and gets a Myers cocktail or one of these vitamin IVs where you're getting these minerals in the IV drip bag. Yes. Seems to me the most bioavailable because these are all synthetic, of course, compounds. Uh, that the molecules that come from the sea that are most bioavailable, biocompatible would be optimal, it, as opposed it, to it a would synthesized be optimal, nutrient. just forbidden, right? Okay, I mean, there's so many things I don't have yeah. to tell you what, yeah, what yeah. we're abused, but this would be the ultimate. Wow, and in the world, this, this is how some people administer stem cells because the body accepts anything. As when it's in this form, because the body says, oh, that, that's me. 
you can just drink this endlessly if you wish. So children who are, I have a great story. The, one of the perinatal specialists who wrote a book about this used in childbirth, okay? He had a teen tom baby, a perfect little girl, like as perfect as I've ever seen. And they took Kinton preconception. They could, took Kinton uh, through the whole uh, uh, prenatal period. Amped up with this for mother's milk and through the whole early childhood. But this child came to our office with their parents. And I'm guessing she was seven, something about that old. And after our meeting with her parents who were in the medical area, she was like missing in our facility. Where is she? And so we just looked room to room. Where's Allegra, Allegra? And she wasn't even listening and she didn't care. But we found her in the conference room where we had a supply of Kinton on display. And she was sitting playfully, kind of singing to herself on the floor. Her legs were just spread with a box of Kinton isotonic before it. And she was on her 15th ampule, just <laughs> happily, <laughs> gleefully drinking them down, putting it. It was like a priceless experience she knew her body knew what it wanted and that's how animals know etc this is more magical than anyone would guess it's really a secret what, what were the pregnancy studies done i remember you yes. i heard you speak he at the- took hundreds of women who had to have uh, who, who to to become part of canton study they had to have uh, if i recall and there's lots of details four failed pregnancies in a row. Now in that era, it was not, I read in the study, it was not uncommon for women to have 10 or even 12 failed pregnancies before they had a baby that survived. And we're talking miscarriage. We're talking dead on arrival. We're talking massive birth defects. Okay. And there's one other special failure of birth. I can't remember. But to get on his study, you had to be in that category. When those women, first time out, took Kintone, and as much as I'm amazed, they had to have gotten it from the third month on. Okay? The third month on. Most of them got it at the beginning, but some even took it on the third month on. 98% of the women had flawless children, despite the, 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 the problems that their health created. A defective uh, birth. And those children in the study he did with Jean Jericho, they followed those children for 15 years to examine annually every aspect of their physiology. That's what was really remarkable. And those children were as perfect as specimens of life, mentally and physically. And that is why People need the entire periodic table. Your cells were designed in it and they didn't stop wanting it. Okay. We just stopped giving it in our food and we stopped giving it in our connection with the sea, etc. Wow. That's fascinating. I mean, it's so big. What is it's it? easy to lose. Yeah. <laughs> and I will go to doctors. Do you not get this? Right. Okay. And last weekend, we gave a seminar to doctors on the Rasha and, and, and some of my favorite things, one of them is Kinton. And these doctors, both of them, advanced doctors, they, they'd never heard of Kinton. One was an MD, one was a, 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 an osteo, uh, one was an MD, one was a naturopath. They'd never heard of Kinton. And, and they, were, they were flawed, f- floored to the point of speechlessness. And the host of the, an interesting thing happened. The host of the seminar had put an ampule of each in like a little gift bag. Okay. I mean, mean, this was a woman, obviously. Okay. We don't usually give gift bags, but they're a little more advanced than that social networking. So she put an ampule of each in. The doctor, after hearing it, he goes home with the gift bag. And one of his patients, an elderly patient, who was undergoing an emergency anxiety 
And I had told him that ketone isotonic could shift the patient from sympathetic to parasympathetic in less than 10 minutes. And he was blown away. Just by drinking it? Just by drinking. Wow. It. Okay. Heart rate variability studies done by uh, Dr. Michael Kessler, okay, who informed me one Sunday morning, Robert Slovak, do you know that that ketone you write about is the only thing I've ever seen that can shift every patient from sympathetic to parasympathetic? Wow. Are you aware of that? And I go, I'm not. And he showed me all the heart rate variability study. It was a very exciting time. Now we, That's we teach wild. this. That's why we have people take it before the Russia. That's why I tell doctors that probably there aren't many doctors waiting re- rooms going on right now. But I tell doctors, if you have a waiting room full of patients, let me tell you, I can tell you every single one is in sympathetic mode. Okay. You're either going to give them bad news, cut them, or take their clothes off. Okay? Done. <laughs> and so, so this, give them an isotonic. Treat them to an isotonic in your waiting room. They will be relaxed. So anyway, this patient, the, 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 the wife of the elderly patient, she said, look, my, he's having anxiety. He's not slept for a day. And he, he, he's never gotten more of three, more than three hours sleep at a time. And the doctor failed to be able to control this. He said he's the most difficult person. So he just goes, I'm just going to do this. He takes the, out of the gift bag. He takes the isotonic. He gives it to the guy and thinking, you know, um, I would have not even told him it could be done the first time. This is the first full night of sleep this man had in three years. And he's like going, he's like calling me. Oh my God, what is this stuff? How did I miss it? And, and that's a common story. Sometimes I'll do <sighs> intramuscular injections of something called procaine. Oh, of course. GH3. Sure, I'll procaine do cy- hydrochloride. do cycles of that every once in a while. Yes. And of course, I'm not recommending that other people try and this. And I'm not recommending it either. <laughs> <laughs> but just personally, like for me, do you think I could... Would it assimilate the? I won't isotonic? stop you from doing it. Okay, interesting. And it could. And if you have it here, I'll be happy to. Hypothetically speaking, would there be any benefit to one doing that as opposed to me just drinking it? There theoretically would be. Yes. Okay. And do you on the procaine thing? Are you a, no. a supporter? I am a supporter. You think it's valid? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. And I'll tell you, a, there's a procedure not allowed to be done in the United States called percutaneous hydrotomy. It's taught in Nice, France. They do probably 150 of these per week. At the Guayas, I don't know if it's the Guayas, Dr. Guayas Clinic. He also teaches doctors from all around the world. I never knew about this procedure when I was affiliated with Quinton until... Uh, uh, un, until I got a call from the the medical director of Miami General Hospital, a man from Cuba, very well informed. He was retiring. He was in his 60s and he was going to live in Mexico. I think in, since we're in Mexico, I think it was San Miguel de Allende. Okay. A beautiful historic city. He was going to live there. But before he did, he went skiing with his family in Utah. And he completely messed up his back. Not a good way to start retirement. And he told me that he knew as the director of the Miami General Hospital, the last thing you do is have surgery on your back. Okay. He told me this, right? Because he watched decades of it. He found out about the Goyaz Institute through some, somebody And he went to France and had the procedure done. And what they do is, for five days, they take an IV bottle of Quinton Isotonic, grab it metrically, hold it above your spine with eight tubes that come down to subcutaneous needles. You see, subcutaneous is how most of Quinton was delivered during the pandemic. It's the signal the body is looking for. And now we're getting into the quantum space. And they, so sub Q 
delivers the signal of kin tone. And so you insert eight needles at one time, four to surround the spine, and you hydrate the spine and its spinal discs. You do this for five days. Maybe it takes 35 minutes to an hour for each session. And you rest and relax, and then you go in again. And he was completely cured to wear undetectable. He ends up going to, to Mexico, San Miguel de Allende, and starting an equivalent clinic. Really? Yes. Is that in existence today? It is in existence today. Wow. And I just had a young man who just <laughs> literally a month and a half ago, who was with uh, our friend uh, Tracy Deuce. They came to A4M. And Tracy is, you know, a water magnet, right? She loves everything water. And she was coming to see the water guy, me, at, at the Quicksilver booth. And I noticed she's coming with a, a handsome young soldier looking guy with a cane. A cane, well, many years before he should have had a cane. And I just look at him and go, she introduces herself to me, say, hey, what what what's going on here he said i'm from in military i'm i'm a person from the military like kind of navy seal level like guy and he said i had a very serious accident that no one's been able to fix my back with all of the work that is available to me i said well do you know what this may have been like a calling of, of, of a meeting of the minds that's scurrying right here he goes what do you mean i said there's a procedure in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico, in which I described to them. And he's like, what? And he is, happens to be a doctor's assistant. So he understands and he just goes, wow. And he said, you know what's even more amazing? My family is from San Miguel de Allende. Okay. And I said, well, let me send you the information. I sent it to him. And the next thing I hear, I kind of forgot about it. He didn't write me or anything. And I get a call from him. He said, you know, I'm going to the peptide conference in, um, in uh, Torrance, California, at Terrania. Have you been to Terrania, the, the resort on the coast? No, I haven't. Oh. It's in Torrance? Oh. Oh. <laughs> May I take you to yeah, it sometime? Yeah, let's go. I don't know if it's open yet for yeah, business. Yeah, yeah, You know, it's, it's gorgeous and special. Um, so anyway... And they make their sea salt of the seawater there, which they are bound. They have a whole staff that protects the sea right before the, on the coast. Anyway, not to digress. So he calls me and said, would you like to join me uh, as my guest for dinner at the peptide? He said, I'd like you to see me. And I'm going, wow. And Tracy goes too. And he's like, look at me. I'm done. It's all fixed. Wow. Okay. So he went to the clinic in he Mexico? He went to the clinic and in Mexico. And what's this place called for, so we can put it in the show notes? <laughs> um, if you can't think of it, I'll get yes. it from you and we'll put it in later. Yeah. I, I, I honestly uh, um, can't remember the, the actual name of the clinic. And, and, and I think it had, did have two names. And what is this particular treatment called again? This style of Percutaneous. administration? Percutaneous. Hydrotomy. Ah, percutaneous hydrotomy. hydrotomy. Okay. And so, is that procedure always done using the isotonic? Always. Quinta? Okay. So that's, always. it's like a kind of a patent. So it's not thing. something we have here. Sure. Sure. Okay. And, uh, and, and it, it's, it's, and, and I wanted to add this. This is what sparked me. I believe several of the days they add procaine hydrochloride. To oh, it. interesting. Okay. Interesting. As yeah. kind of a nerve activator, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. For the autonomic nervous system. Cool. So anyway, this is a universal substance. And I'm so proud to have been one of the people to, to deliver it to, to the world. Yeah. And, and so I expanded. Quintone was really not out of Europe. When, even in, when I discovered it in 2004. It's just some Argentine biologist had brought it to Brazil rather informally. And by the time I left Brazil, 
and stayed and helped the doctors fully use this. It became so in demand that the Brazil FDA banned its importation. Really? Is that still in effect? Still in effect. Oh, that sucks. And it's going to change. I, I have happy news. It's going to change. So this is a difficult product to get in because the pharmaceutical industries truly fear this product. And when it was discovered, this book, which is the guidebook to its use, which is only printed and allowed to be printed in French and, and Spanish, which you got a little taste of. It's an oral only guidebook to its use. And I, I'm not even going to say what depth it goes into, but you know. Okay? Yeah. So it's I can qu- see why it's, it's not allowed into the States. <laughs> so the Puerto Rican distributor that came long after us, in fact, we set that distributor up innocently because it's in Spanish, innocently with its container of Quintone, innocently brings 100 of these books in. And in Puerto Rico, it is the FDA that monitors all imports of medicines and health products. And when they saw this, they flipped out. And um, immediately checked off our U.S. box for being able to be imported. That was the end of Quintone in the United States for two years. Really? It was. So we did not have it. And it cost us over $300,000 in legal fees to get it back. All right. Well, thank God you did. Thank God I did. Uh, We were very happy to do that. So when... France, France elected to give this free of charge to the public and the pharmaceutical com- companies of uh, Europe weren't happy. They immediately figured, how are we going to get rid of this? Well, it was used in the hospital. It was aseptic and apyrogenic, okay, when used by injection, IV. They said, we're going to influence the pharmacopoeia of Europe to change the standards under which injectable substances can be administered. And we're going to order that all substances injected must be heat sterilized. Oh, goodbye. King tone. Brutal. Brutal. That would compromise the integrity of the whole thing, right? This is just, this would just become minerals and trace elements. Okay. And, uh, so, Quintone Laboratories and its schools of Quintone, which had spread. There's a Swiss school, a French school, a Spanish school, you know, a Belgian school. All of them just went underground because it wasn't allowed to be used in Europe in the serious ways that it had been. In 2004, the very year I discovered this because it saved my life in Brazil when I was in a remote area and got gastroenteritis, bacterial gastroenteritis from being a bad boy and eating anything out in the jungle, okay? Experimenting like I do. Uh, I th- it was a very serious time for me. I-, I could have easily died from this because there was nothing around. Uh, and I asked to be helicoptered to Rio de Janeiro, which they told me isn't going to happen unless I had the president's cell phone number, okay, of the country. <laughs> So a innocent, simple carpenter on our team, carpenter, gives me six ampules in a just this tray, just like this. He said, take this. This is our doctor. That's what he said. And I go, I said, Marcelo, what is this? And he said, it's made from the sea. And this is what we use as our doctor. Everyone uses this for children, for anybody. And I'm going, what am I supposed to do with this? He said, though, I advise you to take six, one per hour for the next six hours. And out of desperation, I mean, truly, I would have taken anything, okay? I mean, if you gave me a tablespoon of mercury, I'd have probably taken it because I figured I'm not going to make it unless I get the heck out of here. After those six ampules, 
it was done. I was like, I'm either dead and in a state of a new state of reality, or this stuff really worked. It can't be because I was a mess. I took a shower at midnight and I ran down to the bar that would be open in a little tiny town in the middle of nowhere. And I said, Marcelo, this is amazing. He said, come on, celebrate, have a cervezeria. Okay, <laughs> cerveza. So um, this did it for me. And it became so shocking to me because I already knew a lot about health science. And, and, and I said, I want more of this immediately. And how do I find out about it? And he said, you have to, when you go back to Rio, the doctor is in, in, in Hecreo. And, and, and so I, I invited him to come with me and took him on a trip to Rio. Months later, I kind of even lost the, the interest in a way, because that's not my business is nutraceuticals. And so I got to that doctor's house and I said, look, I know we're late and Marcelo, you already know Marcelo and this is great and it'd take 30 minutes to do it. And I didn't leave till seven o'clock in the morning when he downloaded what I have partially downloaded to you. And I stayed in, in, in Brazil to study this and ended up bringing to it America and most of the rest of the world. Wow. That's the story. Damn. So cool. <laughs> yeah. I knew there was a reason why I gravitated to that stuff when I first saw it. I, maybe it was the, even just the packaging. I thought, this is unique. It's got to do something. I did a bit of research, yeah. but I didn't know 90% of what you just shared with us. You, everyone has to have the periodic table available to its cells and let your cells choose which one of the 78 elements and tra- minerals and trace elements it wants. You have to give it the choice because it had this choice for two and a half billion years. That's all. It's you, simple. Do you suspect that even beyond the known and what some people perceive to be quite limited uh, periodic table, that the other Ormus elements, et cetera, would be present, present in this oh, uh, that, formula? You know, probably one of the greatest sources of extraction of Ormus is from the sea. You know, most people start with seawater. And then they precipitate it and they get the ormus from that. I mean, just because of the ocean's nature and all of the activity, ormus is more present in the ocean than any other place. Cool. Yep. I want to digress back to water. Boy, we, we, I mean, we didn't do good. Did it's we? not really we back didn't. to water because we're just talking about a different form of water. <laughs> but I don't know that I got a definitive answer on like a practical solution for people who don't want to just drink cases of bottled water all the time, uh, are unable to get a clean source of spring water, and therefore are left with their only option as being a filtration system. And if the, if the RO systems uh, that have the tank have the potential, and according to you, are very likely to create this high bacteria water that then has to be you know, sterilized with the UV, as you've indicated here... What is one to do? This is my favorite water purifier. Ah, okay. Because it is practical, it solves all the problems, and it is very inexpensive. Okay. Very, and it's called the AquaTrue? Aqua oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. I this, think, I think it is famous. One, I, it has yeah, become yeah. extremely famous. Let me see I the, did not design this fundamental thing, even though I helped in its advancement. Okay. But this is a magnificent product that the only disadvantage of it is that it doesn't go under the sink for some right. people. So okay? it's a countertop model that you it's fill with tap water. It makes the water, it has a four-stage reverse osmosis system in it. It does everything right. It's the most efficient RO. You know, RO uses water to make water. I don't right. know if you know. It's quite an inefficient process. And you process. waste a lot of water with you a traditional under this the sink RO. This is the most in- efficient that I know of. So where most ROs are 10% efficient, this is 65% efficient. Wow. Okay. So it's remarkable. And I also have, you see the paper there, the many uses of the water. Now, why is it so great for people with health compromises, children with autism and so on? I was so happy that I think it's going on three years now. On my very birthday, I was scheduled to talk to the women at the autism conference. 
And I cannot tell you, I was jumping. I was jumping like for joy because I was going to walk out there and told, and instead of telling them, you can't use the water from your reverse osmosis system. I now said, here is the solution cool. for a family. That's a third to half the price of the RO system. How people. much are these uh, aqua true? So the list price of this, yeah. the list price is four hundred and forty nine. What, dude? And, and and it is like the good RO systems are like a couple grand. I mean, yeah. for the really so, robust so ones. We, we yes, precisely like the one you're referred to. This is four hundred forty, and often our company, Water and Wellness, sells this with one of two options. We either remove, as we will for your listeners, we can work something out. We will take one hundred dollars off of that. Oh, cool! And sometimes we uh, we just add to it, free of charge, a box of hypertonic. Oh, nice. Okay, nice. so we can we can do something for your listeners. That's funny because I didn't even know you ha- had this thing. I hopefully it's it's coming off it's as organic my, as it is because I I was really like uh, it's when a we, masterpiece. When we closed that conversation earlier, I was like, did we? I don't think we ever got to the actual we other didn't. options. You know, um, so that's that's actually really cool. I'm glad to hear that because this is a question I get so often, and I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, I I have the couple filters that I think are are good, um, and then the spring water, which not right. everyone can do. One question about this one, because I've heard that the, uh, the, what's the fluoride molecule, fluoristic, what's it called? Fluorosilicic acid. Fluorosilic acid, acid. Uh, is quite a small molecule and therefore mm. it's it, it difficult is, to but filter it's not, out. It, it's, when, when it, when it, you talk about removal, it's, it's all about the charge. Okay. So it's not like small, big. I mean, even though that's ah, a factor, okay, and it's, okay. it's more complicated. Okay. So yes, it removes the fluoride sufficiently, like 93 to 97% of right. the fluoride. It removes virtually all the toxic elements and the good stuff. If there is any, it'll remove yeah. the calcium, it'll remove the magnesium. And that's where this comes in. You remineralize it with Quintone. Uh, you make would you use the, the perfect hypertonic? Water. Only yeah, because yeah. this is oh, already, already diluted. You'd be wasting money. Got it, got it. But you use a, hyper, a hypertonic and you might put in even if, look, if you're a really health person, you take this straight, always. You want to remineralize your water, you're doing it for a different reason. You're doing it for structure, compatibility with the ah. body. You add this. It doesn't even matter. You can add one of these to the 2.4 liter tank and you've achieved got it. Got it. Got it. Oh, that's really interesting. So even though if you're if you're getting these trace elements in these mm-hmm. minerals, you're still by stripping. This is the thing that I think I've always just like spring water, and I'll I want to talk about structuring and kind of bringing it quote back to life too. But when you're stripping all of the chemicals, you're stripping the minerals, and I guess unstructuring or making a chaotic or more. I mean, just a less natural form of water. So using the hypertonic minerals to remineralize is giving the elements that you removed, plus some that weren't there to begin with in tap plus water. Plus most that weren't right. there to begin with. And so that water's sort of uh, um, intrinsic memory, for lack of a better term, is going, oh, bing, these are the ingredients bing. that the origin of water had bing. in it. So you're Precisely. getting as close to the original earth water as you Precisely. can. Precisely. Really interesting. Wow, that's cool. Uh, and this synergism, I can't tell you because it's beyond the scope of our interview, but the synergism of these elements, there's a famous thing called the, the, the mineral and trace element wheel. And it just shows you, and theoretically it's lined with all the elements of the periodic table. And the lines are drawn between points on, of all the elements to what this one influences this one. This one influences these two. This one influences these three. This one influences another one. That synergism is where the magic is. It's the fact that these things have been together in nature for all this time. And it's not their individuality. It's their synergism that's the right. key. Right. So... That's wild. Uh, back on the bacteria thing, I noticed sometimes, well, when I used to collect my own spring water, there's a couple places way up in the mountains in Southern California where I went and got water and it was tested, pure, clean, beautiful water, but it was a real pain in the ass to get to. 
uh, because I had to run up, uh, <laughs> basically run a hose up the hill about 300 yards and hike up there, <laughs> connect it to the spring, fill up the five gallon glass carboys in my car. Uh, but when I was collecting that water, I'd put them down in the basement and I'd cover them with this mylar, these little mylar yes. um, covers to keep it cold and, yes. and away from the light. And so the water, you know, had the potential for life in it. It never created bacteria or algae. Correct. Now, when I get the live spring water, because it's not been hit with UV or ozone or anything, it's just untouched. They deliver it in a, in a chilled truck. Yes. So when it comes in your house, really? it's still cold from the mountain. Yeah. It's, it's never exposed to light or warmth, except when they carry the bottles into your house. So, or when they open the truck door, but it's kept dark and cold, like mm-hmm. water should mm-hmm. be, right? Yes. However, uh, I've yet to come up with covers for my spring water and mine sit in a window where they get not direct sun, but quite a lot of light. And if one sits there for a while, algae will grow. a little algae will grow in there. Yeah, because it, there are algae spores in the air okay. constantly. Okay. We are breathing m- millions in right now. Okay. And those algae spores are probably not in the water to begin with. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. And they're just, as you take water out, air has to come in. Right. Okay. And you're sucking in algae spores. So if you were to even like put this in the sunlight. Yeah. And because air is going into that, it it could show like a little green tint. And, yeah. and but but that is so easy to rinse out. That's the yeah. point of it. You I can mean, clean I just, this. I just clean it out, but what I'm asking is would that be the the potential negative that you described in the RO tank where this Not bacteria is no, no no algae there. You, you, okay. you don't have light. These are these are most of the bacteria that grows in a tank is in the pseudomonas aeruginosa family of bacteria that pseudomonas can be in, in if it's growing on the salad bar salad no problem it's not going to make it through your stomach okay but if it's in 100,000 colony forming units in your tank and your child with dysbiosis or your husband with uh, colitis is drinking this water it will go for it. Got it. Okay. 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 It will become opportunistic. So that's different than this, than this little mini algae yep. bloom that I yep. just wash out and yes. then it And goes you can away. just, you, you really, you, you really can, one of two things. I often, if you want to sanitize it, you just put a cap full of hydrogen peroxide in, right. leave it for 15 minutes, dump it out, you're done. Yeah. Some people, and I sometimes do this, you, you can just spray some silver, mm-hmm. just some like whatever nano silver or a top notch silver yeah. uh, into it. And it also won't grow. That's funny. You mentioned that peroxide. I finally figured out a way to disinfect my ice bath. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of ice baths. And so I'll get, mm, I think it's 14% right. hydrogen peroxide and I just pour a whole bottle in there. And rather than my water lasting, you know, without getting swampy for a week, now it's like last a month. It's pretty cool. Without question. Yeah. And hydrogen peroxide does convert. I mean, I, you light converts hydrogen peroxide to water, so just be aware of that. Got it. That the darker you, if if, if it's in your bathroom, turn the lights out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, next thing I want to cover on water <laughs> is structuring water. So, to me, um, it makes sense that in nature, water is constantly moving, right? Mm-hmm. And it's moving in that fantastic sort of uh, spiral manner, as described by Victor Schauberger, and When I get water from a spring, I know that that water has been traveling through thousands and thousands of feet of uh, rock, earth, et cetera, but it never stops moving, right? Because it goes through the hydrological cycle. Then I bottle that water and then it sits in my house. And to me, and this could just be my inner hippie, but it seems that when water sits, it tends to lose its potential energy. There's something about it that it it just becomes a bit more stagnant. And so what I'll do on a good day when I have the energy is I'll use this device called the Vitalizer Plus and I'll pour my spring water in there. It vortexes the water using magnets. So it creates a little tornado. And I'll do that in front of the juve red light. So I'll shine that juve red light through the water as it's spinning. And then I'll put it in the cold, dark refrigerator. And that's the water that I drink for the next couple of days. Do you think that that is idiotic or am I restructuring so, the water in that way? 
I have heard positive results from the vitalizer, which spins it. Mm -hmm. I'm always, my own personal view is I'm always a little reluctant to have uh, electromagnetic, electric and magnetic fields around things, but it can be good and it cannot be good. You just don't know. But I have heard positive results from people about the Vitalizer Plus. So I, I'll just say, no problem. Is there any way to test for water structure? Okay, without- there you... Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, story, you always come up with the question. <laughs> this is the tough thing. And we have fallen... The public has fallen in love with the word structured. Okay? And it's a problem. Yeah. Okay? I mean, you, you just will b- likely buy anything that has the word structured added to it. Okay. (laughs) And so probably, and and there are so much, there's so much hype and misinformation in the water business to begin with. They just got another new word to use against the public. Okay. Structured water. The only thing I'm convinced about that will replenish structure to water geometrically is a vortex and it could be the vitalizer. It could be uh, uh, the UMH vortex. It's a static vortex. They're made in Germany. Very, very, very sophisticated vortex. You, you kind of just pour the water through. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And they're, they're they're elaborate. I mean, they're expensive. They're gold plated. I have seen them. Yeah. Beautifully made. And, and they know what they're doing. Uh, and I have also a favorite of mine in the United States is vibrant vital water. I don't know if you know, this is the math. Uh, Randy Hatton is the founder owner of vibrant vital water there in New Mexico. And if you've ever seen or walked into, I don't know, a hotel or a special medical spa or something and seen a large glass vortexer, like as big as you are, okay, that's Randy Hatton's work. He has painstakingly made the most sophisticated vortexers available. And he also makes smaller vortexers. So check out. I okay. believe in his science and believe yeah. he knows what he's doing. Vibrantvitalwater.com, I think. There's an interesting device that's an EMF harmonizing device called the Soma Vedic. I'm not sure if you're familiar with not. them. It's uh, They're basically like a little flying saucer looking thing about yay big. And they're made with precious and semi-precious stones that mm-hmm. are, I guess, ground into uh, sand and then blown into glass, basically. Okay. And so uh, one of the things that these devices do, and they've, I think they've worked with Dr. Isaro Omoto's son yes. in a lab. Yes is exposing water to that field that's created by these stones, uh, which are then, you know, you run electricity through it and it doesn't even have to be near the water, but they've done that experiment where they flash freeze and photograph the water crystals pre and post exposure to the field created by the Soma Vedic. And it's quite compelling. Very interesting. In terms of structure, structural evidence in water, Mm -hmm. that seems to be the only thing I've ever seen that's somewhat tangible where you have like a photograph, before and a photograph after kind of like live blood cell analysis or HRV, things like that, that are measurable to some degree when led credence to the validity of any particular modality device practice, et cetera. So that's one. That's interesting. Yeah. And, and and interestingly, you bring up Emoto. Emoto was a customer of Kintone. Oh, wow. Okay. For for his own health. Okay. And not too long ago, they did, this experiment that you're talking about of the flash crystallization, et cetera, they did it on Quintone. Oh, and I really? had the result. It's, I, I only saw it three days ago. What does it look like? Is it cool? They were like raving about it as I knew they would. Yeah. But I'll show it to you when we okay, go cool. back to the, the resort. Okay. Then, uh, so structuring, good. There's some things that seem to be valid for it. Um, what would be... So when you yeah. structure... To add, ultimately, the periodic table before you vortex. Ah, that's the, the piece key. I'm missing. That's the piece okay, you're missing. Okay. How, do you, how do you feel about the red light exposure? You put yours in the sun. Absolutely. I'm getting red light in the early morning sun. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Photonics, okay. is going to, photonics is going to become very important. Not only exogenous photonics, 
but the recognition that within your body, you have a billion little suns going off because the cells communicate with photons. Okay. Right. And this was the work of Fritz Albert Pop in Germany. And I actually have been contacted like some months ago to join a team that's going to apply Fritz Albert Pop's work with photonics with a new category of water. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. I will keep you up to date. All right. We'll do another episode. And, and, And they're going to call it full structure, coherent water. Oh, wow. Okay. Coherent. Stand yeah. by. Coherent. I like that word because I think, I don't know, anything that you isolate from nature, like grabbing the most pristine spring water from 10,000 feet, solid granite mountain that is as good as it gets. Once that sits around, Correct. it's no longer coherent because you've isolated it from its natural environment and Absolutely. all of the micro energies that are present there that we probably are, aren't don't even, even aware of. Anything. Yeah, we don't even know, about, know what it is, right? Um, is there any indication that water that has been structured and its you know molecular structure is closer to nature even improved on has you know more potential for hydration or any other benefits i've heard people say that structured water is wetter and it's more hydrating but i've yet to see any evidence to support that yeah it's the word structured okay so some structured if it was structured with the necessary electrolytes that increase intracellular hydration yes Got but it. if it wasn't and it was structured by some other claim, it could have been ultrasonically, electromagnetically, photonically structured. Maybe, maybe not. The so other, it's, a, it's a new science. We, we, we just can't, but people like to sell like it's real, but it's okay. not real yet. Okay. It's kind of what I figured. I'm still going to do it. And I'm going <laughs> to add your protocol to it. Uh, the other thing along structuring that's interesting is in the biodynamic farming. And we're here at Quick Small, of course, as we both know. And I mentioned earlier And their biodynamic farm here is just absolutely insane. And part of that process involves, as you may or may not know, making all these different, uh, um, I forget what they call them, their formulae with, you know, different types of fertilizer and compost juice and bunny crap. And it's just, it's absolutely fascinating. But one of the big components of it (laughs) is that they structure it with, you know, they get a copper pole and they spin it around 45 times on the full moon and then they reverse the oscillation and they're doing a lot of structuring of these preparations. And I believe it. Right? I buy it. I do too. When you see the presentation, I, w- I wish the farmer spoke English because I just go interview him. Uh, the translating could be a bit awkward on audio to go back and forth, but I was looking at his astrological charts and he was breaking it all down and there was a translator there. Michaela was kind of saying, okay, he said this next when the moon goes here and Jupiter's there. Then we bury the horn in the ground and three days later we dig it up and feed it to the bunnies and they poop it out. It's just, it's insane. But the thing that really caught me was that structuring, the spinning of the of these liquids yeah. that then go back in the earth. Lunar influence, anytime you move water, especially with nutrients that of course are all about the, I mean, any nutrient, even bunny poop is just the elements of the periodic table, right? I mean, there's nothing more elements, everything in it is just everything here in this room is just an assemblage of the elements of the periodic table. Nothing more, nothing less. That's it. Anything we can look out of this window and see is nothing but the elements of the periodic table. These 92 natural elements brilliantly into every form beyond our comprehension. So I believe in the lunar influences, the planetary influence. I mean, this is like the work of Rudolf Steiner and some of the great biodynamicists. And um, I have seen, and and to the point that it's very conclusive to me, that just... Have you ever have have you seen the large irrigation water structurers that that force the water in a pattern? Let's say a pattern that would be uh, Schauberger proof. Okay, uh-huh. that that would just simply moves the water in a pattern for, between this point and this point, and see the results on crops. I mean, I don't know if you've no, seen. No, I haven't. That's fascinating. You, you know the crops that. We call them crop circles, but you know when they grow crops with the rotary irrigation? Yeah, yeah. So they actually have the inner crops without treated water, 
And then the water continues on the pipe that's rolling around with a vortex device. And the outer crops are getting that. Oh. And it's just very simple. Same seeds, same soil, same everything. This crop is this. Only this one variable. The, one variable. That's crazy. Oh, I want to see that. Yeah. Uh, last thing I want to ask you, and then there were a million other things, of course, I want to talk about. I think we'll do another episode and we'll get into deuterium, Oof, yeah. hydrogen, uh, liposomal nutrients, some of the other things that you have sure. expertise in. Uh, and then a third show about your activism, health activism side cool. of things, because that's a whole other thing. Uh, but with Wait, can we say one activism thing? Sure. That my greatest passion. Sure. And I want your... Your, your audience to truly know how important this is because I don't know anything more destructive going on than this right now. And that is the 3G, 4G, and 5G Hertzian wave electromagnetic frequency or electromagnetic radiation. This is more than any of you can conceive. Okay? This is more dangerous than atomic bombs, than radiation, than nuclear reactors, all combined. And part of the reason is you have embraced it so much. All of us have, okay? You and I are both guilty too. And we have to learn, shield your children with it. Tell them that this device, this is a dangerous advice, device. This is not fun. Treat it like it has plutonium attached to it so that when you use it, if you have to move it away from yourself and all radiation follows the inverse square law, meaning if it's one centimeter away and it gives you X, if you move it two centimeters away, it gives you one fourth X. If you put it three centimeters away, it's one ninth X. It's the square of the distance. So the further you put this away, the better off you and your family are. Never let your anyone take this to sleep, okay, with them. Or he, what he says, this them. guy's, he's talking about his cell phone for those the listening. The cell phone. Yeah. And also, um, it, certainly people who are more sensitive, if, if you're pregnant, like get this away from you. And also keep it, if you're in a home that you have Wi-Fi, not another good thing but less harmful than this in general, unless you're sitting next to it, keep this on airplane mode and make your calls through your Wi-Fi. It just, yeah, just that's what I, in, do you're this. So, this should so right, be yeah. on airplane mode as much as possible for your children. Of course, if you get in the car, you don't have Wi-Fi and then you're, you're forced to go on to this linking up with the local antenna. Now, this thing you heard of 5G, 5G is the same as 3G and 4G, just a hundred times to a thousand times more powerful and therefore a hundred times to a thousand times more dangerous. And right now in Los Angeles, where you and I both live, I can say that the, all the big billboards are going up, Wi-Fi, uh, 5G is here, we have the best, et cetera, et cetera. We want to stop it. We have to stop it. Please look up Robert F. Kennedy's organization that's fighting 5G. I help support this organization. And he is going for it. He is a brilliant strategy. But they are moving this. They are moving this into every town. They're buying off every city council. Do you understand? This is going to be allowed to be 100, the 5G antenna. That's 10 to 100 to 1,000 times more, more powerful, more energy is going to be able to be on the same property with your child's elementary school. Do you understand? They're moving it closer and they're making it much more dangerous. So I just yeah. got that out. Oh, this is you. so <laughs> important. <laughs> You're, that's my number one, uh, I think, health advocacy issue because I agree. And for me, I mean, I understand the basics of the science but it's really born out of my subjective experiences. I was telling you at breakfast this morning, I've just it ruined my life for three years and I'm still recovering from some of the radiation wow. poisoning. You know, my eyes went bad. I have to wear these freaking glasses now. So and molecular hydrogen helps your cells resist any form of radiation, okay? Whether it be electromagnetic or even regular nucleotide radiation from something that's giving off alpha, beta, wait, uh, 
particles. So this is something we haven't gotten to talk yeah. about it, but let's just throw it out there. Yeah. <laughs> Molecular hydrogen can help your cells reduce it, the effect of radiation. I've heard that. And and that's I was already taking the hydrogen and do every day, but that was one of the most compelling. I interviewed a guy named Ian Mitchell from uh, C360 Health. Brilliant guy, researcher, mad scientist, chemist, and they make a C60 product. And he was referring to some studies about the carbon 60 molecule. Yes. Uh, and I'm interested in this. It, I don't have an answer. Yeah, it's, re it's really compelling evidence. Uh, I think they were rat studies about them essentially becoming immune to radiation. I mean, you know, like... like because they took the C60. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I forget the mechanism of action there, but it was, it was quite compelling. So I'm always interested in things that can be taken internally to kind of help your body be more resilient to those fields because they're... They're ubiquitous and there's really no, I mean, even here at Quick Small, I mean, thank God there's very low radiation here, but our, my cell phone works. So I know there's towers on, up on the hill somewhere. But hopefully it's like a, you know, a safer frequency Correct. of the two or three G range. Do, do you remember when we met in, uh, in London for yeah. the first time? Yeah, yeah. There was a device for reducing the effects of electromagnetic fields. I don't know if you saw it. It was from the UK. Yeah, oh, was it the Vibo or something? V mm, Vibo? No, no, no. I can't remember okay. what the name is, but it was a shock to me. Uh, it looked credible, but I'm going to try to see if I can get the name because we both saw it. It was... Okay. Hmm. Okay, it ain't there. Okay, so anyway, it starts with a C, I think. So I'm looking at this. It was a pyramidal device, okay? Uh, kind of a round pyramidal device, okay? And I'm looking, and well, how does this work? And so on. say, well, you, you, you would never even imagine, but there's something very special inside the pyramid that we've found over several years also the word neutralize is not the word, but de-energizes the field right. of a cell phone. Right. And I go, well, what is it? What is it inside? He said, it's something called ketone marine plasma. <laughs> no way. Absolutely. Oh right my there. God. That's so, crazy. I don't know. I have yeah, no yeah, testimony yeah. for that, but just. That's funny. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. You know, just speaking of uh, minerals and electrolytes, uh, the last thing I want to ask you about in water, and then we'll wrap it up and we'll continue uh, on another show is you got to break down the issue of uh, alkaline water. Huh. Now, years ago... You must I, have been reading my mind. Years ago, I went to a presentation for the Kangen machine and they, you know, I watched the PowerPoint and, and, I, and I bought into it. I became a member of the LA, you know, MLM thing for the Kangen water. This is, I mean, I don't know, over 10 years ago. Yes. And uh, I got the machine and I was all excited. And what really impressed me was not so much the pH of the water, but the the ORP okay. of the water. And I did notice when I was drinking that water that my back pain and inflammation just vanished. And I thought, oh my God, I've discovered the Holy Grail. Right. Then I learned more about the, the really... You know, the really ineffective filtration, and I'm still yeah. drinking like LA tap water that's filtered in this right. little four inch filter. It's not in the a great machine. filter, you're right. Uh, and especially so, for four thousand dollars. Yeah, exactly. And then so I abandoned all of that, and then I just went back to the water practices we've discussed. But if you can, in a in a somewhat concise okay. way, break down the misinformation, misconceptions around alkaline okay. water being good so for you, etc. The pH of water was sold. As the ability, as having the ability to neutralize metabolic acids and normalize your body's pH. Well, the pH of your body is very important and it really changes in the different, different compartments, but the body is always fighting metabolic acidity created by us living and burning fuel, all right? And when you oxidize fuel with the oxygen you intake and the sugar it becomes, the glucose becomes the fuel, you produce acids, like carbonic acid, like the stuff that you put in soda, CO2. So you get rid of about 30% of your acidity just by exhaling. You get rid of the CO2 that would have made the fluids of your body more acidic. 
But the rest of it isn't done by exhalation. It's done by bicarbonate alkalinity. And notice I said alkalinity. I didn't say it's gotten rid of by having a different pH. So pH has not any connection with the ability to remove acidity. But the original people who worked with this whole alkaline water experience thought it was pH. In other words, they confused the word alkaline, pH, with alkalinity, a set of three ions that are the definition of neutralizing acid. And this is a little tricky. God wasn't friendly with this bicarbonate chemistry, okay? He tricked us a little bit, I think, to keep us on our toes. But what does neutralize alkalinity is bicarbonates, carbonates, and hydroxides that are also in food. In other words, if food is richly mineralized, it'll typically have more bicarbonates, carbonates, and hydroxide. Okay? That's called the buffering capacity. pH doesn't imply any buffering capacity. So if you didn't, if you had your ionizer in Los Angeles and you were using the water through Los Angeles water through your ionizer, it wouldn't have any more alkalinity than was in the LA tap water. Understand? Even though the pH would show Even higher on the pH Even though the pH was higher. I, I have a whole presentation on this that I will share with you. So it, when I ask doctors how many believe in alkaline water, you know, maybe 30% of the doctors in a, in a course that I might be giving would say, yeah, I believe in it. I've even had some benefits and patient benefit. I'd say, I'll explain all this. But I would say, listen, what do you think happens when you drink a glass of pH 9 or pH 10 water? What do you think happens when it goes through your stomach? Okay. And most of them, there's usually just silence. And they realize that pH is going to be so quickly altered by your body before it gets into the body that it's going to be acidified, depending upon how much acid happens to be in your stomach at the time. But the whole pH thing will go away. So meaningless. <laughs> pH is meaningless. <laughs> so you I can then, drink a glass of, say, nine pH ten, water. I don't and care. because your stomach acid is a two or whatever, three, it's just one gonna, to three. One to three is just immediately going to neutralize yes. that. And so it's, it's, it's like irrelevant. <clears throat> so the real question is, well, how can I? Well, give me water with alkalinity and then I'll neutralize. It's a more complex, I will deliver bicarbonate alkalinity to my body and that will help my body. Well, what does that? We already know baking soda is a perfect, it's sodium bicarbonate. That's a great way to neutralize metabolic acids. You know, I've heard, uh, I did a doc, an interview with the Dr. Circus in uh, Brazil, and yes. he does a lot of... I visited him a number of times. Oh, you times did, yeah. And he I uses baking soda and some of these other yes. non-traditional That's treatments. That's how to really... Out, but I then ask the doctors, and this is the takeaway for your audience, what's another way that you favor to... to you have a patient who's exhibiting low pH, urine pH, and they're doing all the tests right, and you want to help alkalize their body. Besides like baking soda or some other alkalizing compounds, what else? And they would say, well, you know, fresh green juices is damn good way of alkalizing the body. And I say, absolutely. Who can tell me the pH of all fresh green juices? And I get the answer. Well, it has to be 8.4. Of the guys, no, no, no. It does much better than that. It's probably 9.5. And I'm going, do you guys, you, you guys realize that I just... 30 minutes ago told you that pH is irrelevant is as, as having anything to do with the pH. I said, all fresh green juices are acidic, but they're the best alkalizers. Why? Because it has alkalinity, right? You see, just because it has, it's pH is acid. It can still deliver alkalinity because There's it has a, the bicarbonate, because it has the bicarbonate, right. carbonates and hydroxide anions they're really so i tell them at the end of my talk with them i make them repeat this mantra the ph of anything you eat or drink when it's outside your body the ph of anything you eat or drink is irrelevant 
in human physiology. I make them repeat that to me. Are there any potential risks or detriments to your health, in your opinion, from drinking a high pH alkaline water? Absolutely not. That I See, I don't care what the pH is of the water you drink. It's really irrelevant. And unless it has, if you were to drink an extreme alkalizing mineral water, it might upset some other systems in your body. You know, something like, uh, I, um, who's the, who is the, um, I, I guess the reporter, uh, is it Ephraim who travels, um, one, our good earth or something. He travels Not around, sure. um, he's a, he's a famous guy also an actor. He travels around the world and looks at health things. Oh, is it Zach Efron? Zach Efron. Thank oh, you. Okay. Um, yeah. I just kind of was introduced to him oh, okay. and, and he actually supposedly asked to interview me. Because he just did a water, a water show uh, about bottled water in Europe, and there was one bottled water that shocked me. It was seven thousand parts per million of minerals in it. So if you drank this water regularly, it, it would just be too much, and it didn't have a variety. Usually, when you have high mineralization, it's just a couple of elements. Um, but you. You said the right thing when you said, you know, I drank that water and I, I felt a little better. I felt a little loss of inflammation. And that is so well discussed on uh, Tyler LeBaron's website called uh, MolecularHydrogenInstitute.com. It's a superb website. You know, Tyler. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, he was on the it's show. It's an amazing website. Please yeah. go on this to learn about alkaline water and hydrogen and so on. Brilliant guy. But he, he, he discusses that. Hey, when you have an electrolysis system like a Kangen and the various other ones out there, it uses electrolysis. What does electrolysis do to water? It, uh, uh, and on one electrode, it produces oxygen and another electrode, it produces hydrogen. And we've just come through like hydrogen's an incredible thing. Now, the only thing bad about ionizers is they don't make very much hydrogen. You know, maybe a tenth of what a modern tablet can make. But they, they, because, because the whole concept of pH being important got more or less neutralized, they went to, oh, we make hydrogen. They had to come up with something. So they say hydrogen, but it's just not a good deliverer of hydrogen. But any amount of hydrogen is beneficial. And you are a person who benefited from it. So is that what creates the, I, I think it's the higher ORP, the oxidation Hydrogen re is responsible potential. for lowering. Oh, so you it, want a it, lower ORP. Yeah, to a negative range. Uh, so oh, yeah, yeah. If, so negative 800 negative or something. Negative 500, right, right. negative 700. That's right. That's right. And yeah. that reflects electron activity, but really it's due to molecular hydrogen that's oh. in the water. So now I'm, you know, I'm doing the, uh, the hydrogen tab. So I'm getting a negative ORP Absolutely. water out of that. And frankly, when I first developed the hydrogen tablet, co-developed it in 2010. Okay. That was the first tablet that was made. I also believed my goal was to just make a negative ORP. Oh. And I missed the whole science of the molecular hydrogen was the key. And that's what the Japanese brought to the table. And I had missed it. And they brought to the table that it's the molecular hydrogen molecule that's the key to all of this. Forget the ORP, forget this molecular hydrogen. Done. Okay, perfect. Man, well, I think we nailed it. <laughs> I think we nailed it. And we'll do another one and we'll go deeper into the hydrogen cool. and some of the other things. But this was a really beautiful, comprehensive view of like anything and everything. Water, I think, <laughs> again. Was, yeah. As I said, it's been a couple of years, so it's time to do an update and then throw in the keton, uh, you know, minerals and like exactly. add that piece, which was missing before. So, man, thank you so much. And you I look, are very welcome. Yeah, I look forward to hanging we, out. We, we couldn't have it better than this. I mean, it's way. funny because this... You and I were both here at the same time. If we were just having lunch, this is what we would be. We would have the same conversation. Yeah, it would be the same conversation. Yeah, so it's just, uh, you know, it's amazing to be able to have these conversations, not only because I just love to learn and expand my awareness about the way the world works, but to be able to share them with people. So thank you for your 75 years of dedication. And to thank you for path. inviting me. Right on, man. Thank right. you. 
Well, until we meet again, guys, we're off to the beach here at Lovely Quig Smala. Uh, <laughs> hope you enjoy the show and we'll see you soon. He may sh- share pictures with you. Oh, yeah, I will. There will be photos. There will be videos. <laughs> Actually, you know what? For this YouTube video, I'm going to see if we can throw in some B-roll of the property because it's just so fantastic. Everyone needs to know about it. All right, man. Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you, buddy. See you soon. Man, it gives me great satisfaction to promise a thorough episode in the beginning of a show and then end that show and record my outro and know that the mission was accomplished. So as I said earlier, if you're someone who's been curious about the best water practices to support your health, I trust that after this conversation, you have a much better idea of how to accomplish that. And again, for those of you that want to check out the Quinton Minerals, Deuterium Depleted Water, the countertop reverse osmosis system that was mentioned by Robert during the episode, etc. You want to go to waterandwellness.com. That's waterandwellness.com. And the discount code there is STORY10, which gets you 10% off at waterandwellness.com. Let's talk about next week's episode, Ending Myopia, Your Eyes Aren't Broken, and How to Fix Them with Jake Steiner. If you're someone who's struggled with vision issues, next week's episode is going to be a game changer. This dude is absolutely incredible and completely unorthodox in his approach to fixing your eyes if they're tweaked. Now, it's also really inspiring for me because I've known about Jake's work for a long time and it does take a bit of work to fix your eyes, so I haven't done it. You know, I'm going to be honest here. I've not implemented Jake Steiner's uh, methods, but after uh, reviewing that episode that comes out next week, I am uh, committed, let's say. My my commitment has been renewed and goddamn it, I'm going to get back to 2020. So if you want to learn how to do that, Make sure you subscribe to the show so you don't miss next week's episode or any episode to follow. Let's thank our official sponsors. First off, we've got Lifecycle, some amazing biohacker level medicinal mushrooms. You can find them at lifecycle.com. That's L-I-F-E-C-Y-K-E-L, lifecycle.com. The coupon code there is STORY15, gets you 15% off. Then we've got our friends over at juve.com slash Luke, amazing red light therapy. If you follow me on Instagram, you see me doing this stuff all the time. That's J-O-O-V-V dot com slash Luke. Next up, we've got our eye protection from blueblocks.com. If you want great sleep and want to produce melatonin and all of the other neurotransmitters that make you sleep well, wake up well, be happy, joyous, and free, go to blueblocks.com. That's E-L-U-B-L-O-X, blueblocks.com. The discount code there is Lifestylist, and that gets you 15% off. If all of that was too much to remember, just go to lukestory.com slash store. Everything I use and I've ever used to support my health is listed in that online store, along with tons of exclusive discounts. So with that, my friends, I want to take a moment to thank you for listening to this incredible conversation with Robert Slovak. If you want to come be privy to a live recording of a podcast with Robert in January, go to lukestory.com slash events, get your spot the Quick Smala Healing Power of Energy Retreat. It's going to be fantastic. Thanks for listening. Be back with you next week.